International Youth Tournaments. They're the birthplace of future stars in world football. Legends are born and heroes are made. It's where the brightest upcoming wonder kids can shine on the world stage. In celebration of the 2019 Under-17 World Cup kicking off this weekend in Brazil, we've scouted all the participating qualified nations, gathered all the players caught up to their national teams and who are actually available on FIFA 20. And you guessed it, we've placed them into a team in FIFA 20 Karimo to see how they'd grow, develop and perform in a few simulated seasons. If you're looking to keep up to date with all the latest scores, news, transfers, and everything the footballing world has to offer, make sure to check out OneFootball. It's available on both iOS and Android. It allows you to follow your favorite teams, your favorite players, and so much more. The download link is in the description, so make sure to give it a go. It's completely free. It is a must-have app for every football fanatic. It's actually fascinating to look back and see all the famous footballers that appeared in an under-17 World Cup. For example, the likes of Del Piero, Xavi, Iniesta, Ronaldinho, Luis Figo, and the list just goes on and on. So there's a very high chance that maybe a few of these wonder kids in this batch could be the next big thing in world football. Maybe one day even win a Ballon d'Or. We've put all these under-17 World Cup wonder kids at the Black Cats. The Stadium of Light is going to get a massive injection of youth. They're one star for now, but let's see how far this Sunderland team can go before we get into the squad before i introduce you to the under 17 world cup one kids make sure to drop this video a like if you're enjoying all the fifa 20 karimo content coming to the channel all these growth tests experiments and challenges and if you want to keep up to date with everything make sure to smash the subscribe button down below turn on notifications so you never miss out and comment down below who is your favorite under 17 world cup wonder kid so here we go the squad in all their glory it's only a 23 man squad there's only around 23 players or so that are actually under 17 and are playing and participating in this World Cup. I know, a disclaimer, there are actually more under 17 Wonder Kids in FIFA 20. However, for some reason, they're just not called up into their World Cup squads. And we'll get into those reasons later. We'll go through all the players that got snubbed for their World Cup appearances. But for today, for now, these are the World Cup Wonder Kids that will be appearing in Brazil and you need to keep your eye on them. So starting off in the goalkeeper position, Manuel Gasperini, he is 17 years of age. He's got insane potential. He's 57 overall to start, but it can only get better. And he was recently added into the later stages of FIFA 19. And he's creeped his way back into FIFA 20. Hopefully, he can keep a few clean sheets alongside Ivan Martinez, the under-17 goalkeeper. Ian Matson, he's a Chelsea Youth Academy graduate. He's from the Netherlands. He will be representing their back line. He can play left back, right back, and centre back. 17 years of age, and has actually got a pretty decent 80s potential on him. I believe he was recently added in FIFA 20 as well, so that is always a good sign. And now we move down to Australia. Isaac Powell, coming from the Brisbane Raw, 17 years of age. A few of these Wonder Kids are just in here to make up the numbers. They're not that great. However, we need the numbers to fill up this squad. Otherwise, you know, we're going to be forfeiting every game with like 12 players. As we move down to one of many Frenchmen on this list, in this team, it is Marvin Tishibua Bua. Now he probably wins the award for the best name in this whole entire squad. However, the 17-year-old is an exciting prospect, so he's got mid-80s potential. So I'm looking to see if he can crack it here at Sunderland. Another Frenchman alongside him, it's going to be Tangai Kouassi. I believe he is from PSG, the centre-back slash CDM. He's shown great potential, like I said, and can grow into that defensive kind of position. So here we have quite a popular one. It's Liverpool's own Kijana there. He's a right-back slash centre-back. He's a bit versatile in the defence. He's an exciting prospect. He's going to be taking some time away from Liverpool in these few weeks or so to represent the Netherlands. He's pretty much the only player on this list to have a face scan in the game, so that is a good sign to see. Who knows, maybe one day he'll be lining up for Liverpool with Trent Alexander-Arnold in that team. I don't see any way in for him. Maybe he could establish a little position alongside Van Dijk. Who knows? So now we have Ryan Teague, an Australian. Like I said, he's just here to make up the numbers. He's just here for that participation. We move on here to our next intriguing youngster. We have an exciting prospect out of Argentina. He plays for Independiente, and I believe he is recently a new, brand new wonder kid in FIFA 20. Argentina this FIFA have produced some gems on gems, and Alan Velasco is yet another one of them. He's probably one of the youngest players in this squad, has 16 years of age. He can play on the left, he can play on the right, and he can also put in a shift at striker. It can grow all the way into the 80s, so a plus 20 or so growth I'm going to expect on him. And I've got some big expectations in FIFA 20 and also in real life, so I'll be keeping tabs on this wonder kid. Nathaniel Imbuku, not really sure how to pronounce 
that's that. But another Frenchman in here, the left mid. He's 17 years of age. He's another exciting prospect. Another young gun who could grow into the 80s. And there's a lot of growth and expectations we have on these under-17 wonder kids. So let's hope they can pull through. And Mbuku is no different. Lucien Agume, you might have seen him on my under-18 wonder kids video in FIFA 20. But the Frenchman from Inter Milan is currently playing for their youth team, their Primavera squad. And he can have time away from there to focus on the national team here in the under-17 World Cup. I think he could captain this side. He's worthy of the armband. And maybe he could even go all the way with France. Who knows? And these French Wonder Kids do not stop because our next few Wonder Kids right here they're all French. But another one is Enzo Millard. He's another player that made an appearance in my under-18 Wonder Kids video. Make sure to check it out if you haven't. 16 years of age, playing for Monaco, an exciting prospect, and has been called up to the national team as well. So now we've gone back to back to back. Our third French midfielder here is going to be Adil Ayuchiche. He was recently added in a FIFA 20 squad update. He's 16 years of age and can pretty much play anywhere in that central midfield. CEM, CDM, and CAM. He's 16 years of age and he might be having a face scan coming into the game with all this new PSG with PSG having all their face scans captured who knows in the next few months you might be seeing his real face scan in FIFA 20. I'm not too sure. Another big leader for France and this under-17 Wonder Kid squad. Okay, here we are. Fourth in a row. This is turning into a French squad, but right now, Oanis Taibi is the under-17 CM. I don't know whether he's going to get into this team because we have so many central midfielders, but he's 17. He's showing great potential, and I still think he could provide a bit of backup. He could come off the bench and cause a real impact. Here we go. Finally, we take a break from the French Wonder Kids here with Mohamed Tabouni. I've probably butchered his name but at 17 years of age from the Netherlands he's a cam he's a playmaker potential is through the roof and he could probably be starting he could probably earn his place in this team playing for AZ Alkmaar in the Eredivisie another Dutch wonder kid the flying Dutchman could well and truly flagship their under 17 squads to glory like they did in the under 17 Euros maybe they could do it again here in the under 17 World Cup you never know however in this squad we have playmakers on playmakers on playmakers here with Efren Alvarez the Mexican is 17 years of age, coming straight out of the MLS from LA Galaxy. He's 60 overall, and I do believe he was in FIFA 19. He was added towards the back end of it. Can also play as a Trecortista, a little set of forward role. But the main question is, can he be Mexico's main man and lead them to glory? Who knows, but he's got a lot to carry on his shoulders. An exciting prospect. A lot of potential can be reached with this kid. All right, so a few in a row here to make up the numbers. Another few Australians in here with Luke Duzel coming out of Western United. We also have Birkin Kurda, another 17-year-old Australian. I'm sorry, fellow Aussies, but I just got to tell you the truth. They've all been called up to our World Cup squad, but... I don't see them getting anywhere near our under-17 Wonder Kids squad, to be honest. Haysem Hassan is another Frenchman. He's a left winger, 17 years of age. He's rocking the little ponytail, and he's showing great potential. At 64 overall, he's probably one of the best players in this squad right now in terms of overall. And on the left wing, he's going to be accompanied by his fellow countryman in Isaac Lihadji. Another 64 overall 17-year-old out of France. Two pretty similar players right here, and I'm sure they could do bits down the left and right hand side. All right, moving on to our strike force here. And now we're starting to get into a few different nations with Jordi Escobar, the one and only Spaniard out of this team. He's straight out of Valencia from La Liga and he's a striker, 17 years of age. He's out and out striker, showing great potential being called up to the Spanish national team. Let's hope that he can bag us all our goals because we have a limited strike force right now. The firepower up top, it's not looking too lethal right here with Romano Postema, 59 overall, not the best player to start off with, but now his fellow countryman in Naufal Banner, 17 years of age. I do believe he represented the Netherlands at the U17 Euros earlier this year, making his way back for the World Cup squad too. An exciting prospect and at 61 overall, he could make a little decent strike partnership with Escobar. However, that is going to wrap it up for this very tight and limited squad right here. Can they fulfill their potential at Sunderland? It'll be interesting to see how they grow, develop, and perform over the course of a few seasons. But that's what it's all about. Let's see if the under-7 won the kids' World Cup team can do it here in career mode. And this is how they will be lining up in the 4-3-3 formation. Nothing too fancy. It'll just get the job done here with the captain, Lucien Agume. The sky is the limit here in League One. Let's see how many seasons it takes them to get out of League One, gain promotion to the championship, and maybe even the Premier League, but that is how the team is looking. This is the bench. They got Alvarez to come off the bench as well as Banners, and then the Australians that were just there to make up the numbers are on the bench. Apologies in advance to anyone from these nations, including Angola, Brazil, Cameroon, Chile, Ecuador, Haiti, Hungary, Japan, Korea, Nigeria, Paraguay, Senegal, USA, Canada, 
and the mighty Solomon Islands. There are currently no under 17 players from any of your nations that are in FIFA 20 or have been caught up to the national team. So therefore, they can't be in this squad. I I'm sorry. I hope they'll be added into FIFA one day. The lack of representation and underrepresentation, let's just say, of the nations that qualified for this World Cup, it really breaks my heart that only a few nations have their Wonder Kids in FIFA 20. Another thing that keeps me up at night are the Wonder Kids missing out on their World Cup appearances for their nations for another reason, for a number of reasons actually. A combination of their clubs not letting them go to represent their nations, like Heno and Masengo, he's got some duties in Bristol City, as well as the likes of more French Wonder Kids. You thought we had them all, but no, there's still more under 17 Wonder Kids with Willem Gwebbles, Cohen Dre recently added into FIFA 20 career mode, Elise Esposito is 17, but he unfortunately can't represent Italy because Alexis Sanchez got injured for Inter. Inter just do not want to let him go. They blocked him from participating in this tournament alongside Eddie Salcedo, who was on loan at Hellas Verona. Another Italian just not called up to the national team, as well as Filippo Tolomello. And you know, maybe they just haven't been called up because the coaches just don't think they're good enough yet. Who knows? I can imagine PSV not letting a Hatteran go and represent the Netherlands. He's already been there for the under-17 Euros. Vandenberg, another Dutchman, alongside some Somerville, Gravenberch, and the last few Wonder Kids down here that are French, Chevalier and Lotten. Yeah, they're just not caught up to the national team. Maybe there just wasn't space to fit them into the squad and they just missed out. Alongside Ansu Fati, who will not be representing Spain, he will not be called up by the national team because Barcelona obviously is playing a major role in their team this season and they don't want to go without him for a few weeks too. Now let's simulate throughout the seasons. What can they achieve here in FIFA 20 career mode? Can they take Sunderland to glory? There are so many questions to be asked, so much potential to be fulfilled. Let's get straight into it. So here we go, the end of season one. And in League One, it was a nail-biting finish here. It was closer than we thought. The boys finishing in 19th. They didn't get relegated from the third division. However, they were only six points away from the drop. And they just survived with 12 wins, 8 draws, and 26 L's. Yeah, lads, let's just say that there's a lot to improve on for next season. So in terms of our best performers, let's see who turned up. And it's Isaac Lahadji. I didn't expect him to bag all our goals, but 13 goals and 6 assists makes him be the top goal scorer. We'll move down. I said they might come out of nowhere and do bits. Here we have Hassan, the man on the left wing. 12 goals and 2 assists for him. Nufal Banis was our top goal scorer striker with 7 goals and 4 assists. Postema, he did alright there with 5 goals and 2. 3 Dutchmans in a row here with 4 goals and 2 assists for Tabuni. Efrain Alvarez getting 3 goals and it's Alan Velasco with 2. Interesting stuff as we move down. Agume picked up an injury towards the end of the season. Escobar didn't do all too well but we We'd expect a bit more from him. Matson going up quite well, getting 50 appearances. Gasparini, yeah, only five clean sheets. In terms of overall growth and attribute boosts, we have Manuel Gasparini getting the most with the overall change of plus six. Kijana Hobe going up a plus six as well. I'm liking the, the new little, you know, growth charts and it shows you what they had at the start of the season and how they've now finished. Alan Velasco going up by five. A plus five for Mbuku. Martinez going up by four. Tishi Bua Bua going up by four as well. Chuche going up by four. Plus four for Agume and Alvarez. So we've got consistent and decent and growth all across the board. We set the bar there with a plus two or higher. Decent stuff. Let's see how they improve going into their second season in League One. So here we are then, end of season two, and the improvement has been absolutely mental there. Take a look at that. They finish in sixth position, and that means they qualify for the playoffs. Peter Brutt and QPR go up, but let's see how they've done in the playoffs so far. That is from what? Finishing in 19th all the way up to sixth, plus 13 places. All in the space of one year. League One playoffs, and they've made it all the way to the final. We've got Coventry City. They defeat Luton Town 7-2 on aggregate. And therefore, the Black Cats, the under-17 one, the kids get a day out at Wembley. Promotion is on the line. So let's simulate this one and see what they can conjure up here. We're going to go in, and it's going to be 1-0. The Spaniard Escobar up top. He goes in the 37th minute. Doesn't waste any time, and he gets the one and only goal to send us to the championship. It's promotion achieved in two seasons and I could not be prouder of all the lads out there. In our promotion winning campaign, let's take a look and see who the main performers were. Yet again, it's consistency from Isaac Lahaji coming out of nowhere and getting 18 goals and 12 assists, double digits in both. Then we have Hassi Hassan, 17 goals again, two assists for him. 
Potsema, I said I didn't really give him a chance before the start of this video, but he's come out with 13 goals this season, as well as Mohamed Sabuni, 18 goal contributions there, double figures in goals with 10. Escobar with that valuable goal in the playoff final at Wembley against Coventry, 10 goals for him. That goal was probably the most important he'll score all season. Nafel Banis getting nine goals there. Velasco improving upon last season with eight. Milot with six and seven assists. Alvarez with four goals and seven assists. Tushi Bua Bua from centre back. How's he gotten three goals and two assists? The man's just out here dominating, and what a way to do it. He's got the best name in this entire squad. And then Lucien Agume with 10 goal contributions. Eight assists is his main stat in there as well. We'll take a look at the goalkeepers and its improvement from five clean sheets to 16. This time for Manuel Gasparini. Gasperini, he goes up by five overall as well. So plus five seems to be the maximum limit for overall growth this season. My oh my, we've got a lot of them. Gasperini, Martinez, Velasco, Mbuku. We're now starting to get some players into the 70s now. Milot as well. Alvarez at a 69. Lahaji is our best player at 74. The 70s are starting to creep in, but will it be enough for the championship and survival in the second division? We're going to have to find out. But Sunderland, they're looking the part now, and the growth is starting to roll in here. So let's see how they perform in the championship. A new season, a new division. Let's do this. So here we go. The debut in the championship. It's actually quite a respectable finish here in 11th position. Basically finishing in mid-table bang average. And there we go. We're, we're pretty close to that playoff positions for now. And it was round three defeat in the FA Cup to Norwich 5-0. And the Carabao Cup saw us go out in round three as well. It was 3-1 to our bitter rivals, Newcastle United. So it was our first season in the second division. Let's see who performed. Let's see who showed up. And there we go. It is Hassan again. What, three seasons in a row now. He's got double figures in goals. 13 for him. Velasco getting eight. It's Banis up top with eight as well. Milot surprisingly with seven goals and five assists for him. Unfortunately, it is Lahaji, another consistent performer for us. Getting an injury with seven goals and one assist. Escobar again with four goals. Kijana Hover bagging three goals from right back. And then Alvarez with three goals and two. Potstema as well with three goals. The championship, it's a different level. It's a different type of quality. And they've got to step up. Their growers not show as however. But Mohamed has got himself seven assists in there. And as you can see, Gasparini, every season, he's getting more clean cheats, which is good to see. 18. Overall growth saw the maximum again of five. This season, however, not too much. It was Gasparini going up by five, but the rest, there weren't too many. There's still plus fours. There's still a few plus threes. A lot of players now are entering the 70s. And as you can see there, Lahaji nearly getting into the 80s. So the growth is going through the roof at the moment. Business is booming. Let's see how the second season in the championship goes. Season four, let's get it underway. There we go. What a season. Second place. We finished runners-up with 116 points in the championship. It's only taken two seasons, but we finally got there. And that's it. Promotion to the Premier League. We've now reached the promised land. And what a season it was. 37 wins, 5 draws and 4 losses. 104 goals scored. And we are firing on all cylinders here. A deep run in the FA Cup would have been nice, but we got eliminated by Liverpool 2 0 It was the quarterfinals, so I guess that's respectable. And in the character about Cup. It was round three elimination again, this time to Bournemouth. We are Premier League. Say we are Premier League. What a season it has been. And it's all thanks to this man. Hassiem Hassan has had the season of his life. 43 goals in 56 appearances. Eight assists as well. That is mind-blowing stats. That is Messi and Ronaldo type numbers. He is pretty much the French Ronaldo of the championship right now. I can't wait to see what he can achieve in the Premier League alongside his French winger compatriot here with 18 goals and 10 assists. 28 goal contributions from him. Postema bag and 13 goals. Lucien Agume being like a Paul Pogba type player in this side. Getting some goals and getting assists in there as well. With 26 goal contributions, 15 assists was his main highlight. As well as Enzo Milot. The Afro power getting the business done. 7 goals and 6 assists. Banis with 6 goals. Kijana Hove somehow has been really decent in terms of output on the right back. 4 goals and 3 assists. Velasco with 4 goals and 2. Adewayi Chuche only with 4 goals and 3 assists. He's getting a bit outshone by his other French compatriots. And it's Gasperini with 22 clean sheets and three assists somehow. How is he getting three assists from goalkeeper? What is he doing? I don't know, but keep it up, son. Ian Matson grabbing four assists from left back, which is a respectable stat. Now, let's take a look at the main growers. It's Gasparini again. However, Matson, Hoover, Agume, and also Hassan, Lahadji, and Postema join them with a plus four overall boost. No plus fives this season.
season. A lot of players going up by three here. And could this be enough for survival in the Premier League? We're going to have to find out. The boys have ran rugged this whole season. They've had the energy drained from them. But now it's time to recharge. And let's go into the first division. The Premier League has come calling. Let's see what season five has to offer. So the 17-year-old World Cup won the kids who are probably entering their 20s right here. But they finish in their first season in the Prem, their debut. They've got that 11th place finish. They love a decent 11th place finish right here with 44 points. They're pretty much smack bang in the middle of the table. So it was our first appearance in the Premier League and it looks like we've got three top goal scorers here with Enzo Milot getting 10 goals and 7 assists. Lahadji getting 10 goals and 5. Banas, the 22-year-old, just bagging a simple 10. We have Hassan, the main man in the championship, our 43 goal a season player over there. He hasn't brought that form over here in the Premier League. He struggled to adapt to the the top flight and it's five goals and four assists still decent still one of our best performers Escobar again in there with five goals Efren Alvarez with three goals and then it's Wanis Taibi with two goals and two assists Tabuni getting two goals and two and it's Gasparini again he was improving in the clean sheets but now he's entered the prem and it's a bit harder so eight clean sheets to start off for him our biggest and best goals in terms of overall is Ian Matson with a plus four as well Kijana Hover gets himself a plus four to an 84 overall damn he's growing well and Gasparini now gets himself in into the 80s. Tisha Bua Bua going up to a 78. Agume is now cracked into the 80s as well as Enzo Milot Tawabuni as well with an 81 overall. So I'm probably going to go out here and say that this team could maybe do a cheeky little push for Europe next season. They've got the quality now. They've got the players. Now they need to go out and get those results. So at the end of the sixth season, it looks like we're slowly but surely climbing the ranks here. The under 17 won the kids now coming into fruition and they've gathered up 63 points in the Premier League. Only a few points away from the top European places and they might be lacking that cutting edge but so far in the Premier League, it's been a success. Round 4 elimination to Arsenal 4-0 in the FA Cup. And in the Carabao, they got all the way to the quarterfinals and lost 5-1 to Manchester City. Asim Hassan again proven to be our most crucial player, our vital player in this journey, in this growth test. 16 goals and 5 assists for him. Enzo Milot bagging 14 goals and 3. And then Isaac Lahadji as well, 13 goals and 9 assists. The three Frenchmen, the three horsemen doing also well. And then Nufal Banas with 10 goals a 23 year old will move on to Adil Ayuchiche with four goals and one assist Mohamed Tabuni with two goals and seven and then Escobar with two goals and one and then Matson always doing well from left back he got three assists this season from that position and Gasparini getting himself 11 clean sheets this year and one assist just to add on top as we have the French midfielders Taibi and Mbuku and also the Spanish goalkeeper Ivan Martinez not growing whatsoever but the growers this season the main ones as well were Ian Matson with plus three Lucien Agume gets a plus three as well as Enzo Milot with a plus three Tabuni and Banas the Dutch pair rounding up the plus threes in the side and then there's plus twos all around for pretty much everyone the growth is doing well the results are getting better the performances are getting better now let's head on into season seven so here we are now we mean business in season seven they find themselves in seventh position now things are starting to fall into place here but we're still a bit away there's a bit of a gap between us and sixth place the top six is pretty sad i think that is europa league qualification for next season at least the qualifying rounds anyway so europe here we come oh boy in the carabao cup we lost in the semi-finals 2-1 to liverpool on aggregate that one's got a sting we were so close, but yet so far. So here are your top performers in Season 7. And you've got to call him Mr. Consistent. He has been an electric player for us. And 18 goals and 6 assists yet again for Haysom Hassan. You never heard of him, but he's become a legend here at Sunderland. And for this Wonder Kids squad, Adil Ayuchiche with 10 goals and 5 assists. That's probably one of his best seasons so far. Isaac Lahadji bagging 10 goals and 7. And then Nufal Banas. With a combined 10 goal contributions, 8 goals and 2 assists for him. And then Kijan Hover from right back. 6 goals for the Dutchman. That is insane stuff. Scoring more goals than Jordi Escobar, the Spanish striker over here. And then a massive 21 clean sheets for Manuel Gasparini. The Italian Stallion is absolutely dominating in nets at the main growers. And here you go. A plus 4 to Agume, plus 3 to Gasparini. And then there are a few plus threes in here. Hover, the Dutch boys are doing well as well as Jordi Escobar. The growth has never failed, but we'll see how that is affected in Season 8. Dynamic potential is working in full swing. It's working 
at its sparkling best here. Now let's take a look and see how dynamic potential affects the boys' European performances next season. Europa League, here we come. Well, would you take a look at that? They've earned themselves a place in the top four. They've creeped up into those Champions League positions. 83 points. They've done so convincingly, and I'm proud of the Wonder Kids now. They've finally earned their stripes here in the Premier League, and really, they were only two points away from being runners-up. And this is on track to being probably one of the most successful seasons ever. Ever. They're in the FA Cup final now up against Manchester City. They've earned themselves a day out at Wembley for some silverware, so that could be an exciting one. And with their first appearance in Europe, it didn't phase them one bit here as they've gotten themselves into the final up against Raul Betis in the Europa League. Two games remaining left in the season, two pieces of silverware to be had. It is going to be an explosive end to this video. Now let's take a glance at our main performers here. Oh my goodness, 40 goals for Mr. Enzo Milos. 24 years of age, the Afro man has done the job here. That is like striker Messi Ronaldo type numbers, 40 goals in a season, plus 15 assists to add on top of that, 55 goal contributions, and what a season he has had. And now the Wonder Kids all the way up to an 89 overall, Lucien Agume has gotten half those goals, still a decent season, 20 goals and 14 assists, Newfoundland Banis, the Dutch striker with 19 goals and 3, Lahadji with 17 goals and 7, Mr. Consistent, he picked up a bit of an injury, the Ponytail was wasn't in full form this season, but 13 goals and 7 assists for him. Alan Velasco is finally coming into a bit of form here with 11 goals and 1 assist. And Tangai Kouassi, the goal-scoring centre-back slash CDM, getting 6 goals and 2. Adil Ayichuche getting 6 goals and 5. And then Mohamed Tabuni with 14 assists and 6 goals. Ian Matson from left-back. All the defenders are getting in amongst the acts here with 5 goals and 7 assists for him. Another Dutchman with 5 goals. Jordi Escobar sort of let me down here with 4 goals. But Hover again with 3 goals and 1. Manuel Gasparini played 62 matches this season and got himself two assists and 27 clean sheets, now at an 88 overall. And just take a look at the growth here. Out of nowhere, Ivan Martinez goes up a plus six alongside Juanes Taibi. Good on them, they've had late growth spurts. However, the rest of the Wonder Kids, they've just outdone the expectations here. They've gone above and beyond, and dynamic potential has really come into full effect right now. And you can see our first 90 overall player, the highest rated player in this team, is Kia Jana Hover. We move on though, and it's plus twos, plus threes. These Wonder Kids have grown oh so well, oh so consistently. And look at how many Wonder Kids we have to look forward to in this Under-17 World Cup, if only there was more under-17 Wonder Kids in FIFA 20. We would have had a field day with this, but the 23-man squad ended up getting the job done at the end of the day. So with all the injuries and stamina issues we have right now, this is the starting 11 going into face Manchester City in the FA Cup final. We're going to simulate the Real Betis Europa League final after this. So let's see if we can get two pieces of silverware in two games. And here we have it. Wembley awaits us. It's a game up against the English champions. And what a way to go out here with an FA Cup final final, Kijana Hover will lead the lads out and they've come a long way all the way from the depths of League One. Starting off as 17 year olds, now they're entering the peak time of their career and this is the time where they need to prove themselves on the big stage and it's up for some silverware. The pyro and the fire is out for this one. That has been the road to the final. And we're coming up against the best Manchester City. I still can't believe the insane season that Millot had. But we're going to hope to see it continue here in the FA Cup final. Here we go. Kickoff is underway. It is Coutrone to kick us off. No, oh, Benteke touches down beautifully. And the Uruguayan now. He's made his way into the box. He'll find someone at the back post. And Tissue Bua Bua off the post. And that's a lifeline gifted to us. From Agume. And now Lahadji finds Kijana Hover. He's playing with a bit of a knock. But he'll play on because he's a tough cookie. And look at this from Banis. It was a scuffed shot, but in the end, it was a chance. Deception from Lahadji. He's having an electric start to this game. And look at Agume. Milot slips it through into the path of Tabuni, who cut back, sends Tar to the shops, and that should have been the opener. Hover with a big tackle, and it wins his back possession here. Now, Lucio Nagume has the chance to roam free, who will find Banis in the middle. Now, back to Milot. Milot overran it, but he will retrieve possession. Now back to Agume, Milot, the two French midfielders running right here at Wembley. And Edison makes a good save. Oh, Milot, what an interception. He's had a brilliant game. All he's missing is a goal and an assist. But Tabuni now, the Dutch connection. We've sent 
Manchester City's defense into La La Land. And look at this from Banners into the bottom right hand corner. He's finessed it past Edison in goal. And the number 24, he's opened the scoring here at Wembley right before half time. And we take the advantage. We take the 1 0 lead at Wembley at the FA Cup final. It is a brilliant afternoon here in London. And it's the Dutch connection to get us our first goal. And it's elegantly taken from our main man striker up top. That is half time. We fought valiantly and we go into the break 1 0 up. Let's hope we can continue this performance in the second half and it can lead us to FA Cup glory. Now, oh my goodness, Chalov! He's just come off the bench in his first touch. It's his first goal and it's an overhead kick, scissor kick. I don't even know what to call it. It's a bicycle kick into the back of the net straight off corner. And that's probably one of the best goals in FIFA 20 I've ever conceded. Oh my word, look at that. Two Gasparinis in net wouldn't have saved that. And the Russian bags the equalizer for City in emphatic fashion. I mean, I'm not even mad. That was an amazing goal. Lahadji through to Agume. And now I can see that run from Velasco. But Banis was the one on side. Can he brush off his defender? Look at Banis right here. It is Newfoul Banis for the winner. Newfoul Banis gets in there, boys. He's come up trumps again in the second half. And he bags an FA Cup final brace. Knee slides to the fans. And there we go. He's put the team into the lead. And now, what a game we have in our hands here. He outmuscles his defender. He takes him off guard. And one-on-one -on -one with Edison. There was only one outcome. And it's a new foul banners double. It is the second. And we've taken back our lead. Hover. No, Hover's lost it. No, not like this. Not like this, Rodrigo. Okay, that is our defensive mistake. And Man City get the equalizer. Hover's had a brilliant game. And it's just one lapse of concentration. It's similar to our goal, how we just took advantage of the defender's lack of strength. And there we go, it's as easy as you like, an open net for Rodrigo. And of course, of course we're going into extra time. He's running and running, he's been a workhorse in midfield. But Velasco now, he's entered the box. The Argentine will cut back, he will find someone in the middle. It's Matson from left back. Gume finds Escobar, fresh off the bench. Escobar back into the path of Agume and Edison. Agume on the follow-up and get that up, your man City. We've dominated so far. And at the start of the second period of extra time, it's Lucien Agume. He's worked his socks off all game. A missed time tackle from Tar, and the rebound goes straight back to him, fortunately. And the French midfielder, the Inter Wonder Kid, does the job here in the FA Cup final, and that might be the winner for us. No, oh, you're kidding. You're kidding. You're kidding. Oh my gosh, man. You're kidding me. No way. No way. And now it's penalties to decide at 3-3 after 120 minutes. All right, just be simple. Done and dusted. Chalov, the bicycle kick hero for City. Gasparini denies him. And now Milot, come on, son. Do your job. Goal number 41 of the season. And there it is. Arrowed into the bottom left. Let's get this party started, boys. Come on. Leroy Sane. He goes left. Oh, Gasparini was so close. Now, here with Escobar. Fresh off the bench. He got that assist for the third goal. And there we go. Slotted calmly. Cool and calm. And here is Junior Firpo. No, it's Rodrigo. He scored that third goal. And he's blasted that one. That's right, mate. Taibi, also another sub. Let's get underway here. Oh, that is brilliant. The number seven off the bench. And Tanker, where's he going? He's going right. No, he went left. And here we go. This could be... The goal-winning penalty from Matson. Ian Matson, the Dutch left back. Ian Matson, of course. Edison saves. Come on, here we go. Linkovic Savic, who did well coming off the bench, and he's gone left and he's missed it. And there we go. It went all the way to penalties. It didn't need to. After a six-goal thriller at Wembley, it's Gasparini the hero in the penalty shootout. The fans are going mental. They are loving life right now. It was an emotional roller coaster. And finally, we get our hands on the trophy. And all those eight years of grind, sacrifice, the blood, the sweat, the tears have finally paid off here. The hustle, and it's Mr. Sunderland, it's Captain Fantastic, the former Liverpool boy, will raise the trophy. And there we go, the Dutch right back, the best player in this squad, and the captain lifts up the famous old FA Cup, and we are the champions. I'm sure the celebrations will go long into the night, We've got a new Europa League final to simulate. After 120 minutes in the FA Cup final, I don't know how we're going to muster up a win here against Real Betis in the Europa League final. Only a few days later, the boys are fatigued. They're tired from partying. 
but we're going to simulate this final and see what happens. A pull out the draw, a 3-1 victory in their banners with another final brace. He's really turned up in the big games, and it's goal number 41 for the goal scorer midfielder Milot. The Frenchman gets in amongst the act. And we lift up the Europa League trophy. It's European champions for the Wonder Kids. And what a way to finish off Season 8 there. Qualify for the Champions League. Won the FA Cup. Won the Europa League as well. European champions. And the World Cup has got a lot to look forward to in the coming weeks. Because these Wonder Kids are absolutely insane. They've come through with the help of dynamic potential. And some brilliant performances here. So I hope you guys did enjoy this FIFA 20 career mode growth test slash experiment. If you did, make sure to slap the like button down below. Hit subscribe and turn on the notification bell. If you're looking for more FIFA 20 career mode content, we've got it coming out on the regular, on the daily. Follow me on Twitter. The link is in the description. Also, comment down below who is your favorite under-17 World Cup wonder kid, either in this team or in real life. I have been BCHD. Hopefully, you did enjoy. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the very next video.